So, um, yeah, Chris, um, uh, thanks for being with us today Pleasure. here. Pleasure. And it's, it's always great um, talking to you <laughs> and in this informal <laughs> ambience. I wanted to ask you, first and foremost, that what do you think about this um, zero interest rate policy that uh, right. the central banks around the world and all these governments have initiated? Um, and the, 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 the so-called QE2 program of Federal Reserve um, Bank in America. And how is that affecting or impacting the financial and economic landscape globally? Um, right, and, right. I mean, if, if you can. Well, I'm originally from the United States, as you know, and if you would have asked me three years ago or four years ago, uh, if I could have foreseen that the United States and the Federal Reserve would be using a zero interest rate policy and monetizing their debt, um, I would have laughed and thought, you're, you're joking, you're kidding me. Uh, and it's, it almost sounds like a bad rerun of, of a Godzilla movie out of Japan. Um, because when the Japanese central bank in the 90s utilized a zero interest rate policy, um, they were criticized by the U.S. Federal Reserve, the IMF, the, the, the U.S. banking industry. And here we've come full circle where after the global financial crisis, um, the Federal Reserve has chosen to bail out their banking brethren uh, in, as a result of the failed bets from the mortgage market and the subprime market. Um, and if I speak very directly, I think that zero interest rate policy and ZERP uh, is really an admission of failure that, that the, the Federal Reserve's monetary policy is not working. Um, QE2 is, is a quantitative easing, uh, is really a, a sophisticated way of, of saying monetizing the, the debt and debasing the currency. And we have a, a significant and serious problem that um, there is still a tremendous amount of failed and toxic debt sitting on the balance sheets of these banks. Um, and the Fed is purposely debasing the U.S. dollar as a way of dealing with the debt. So I think we're in a very precarious situation. Um, most people are, are looking at the rise of asset markets, particularly the equity markets and now the commodity markets over the last two years. And uh, like George W. Bush, when, when they invaded Iraq, saying mission accomplished, problem solved. But I think um, that also is a part of the Federal Reserve's uh, smoke and mirrors illusion, so to speak, to get people to focus on rising asset markets as a way of saying the problem is solved, but all of the toxic debt that, that it was a part of the problem during the global financial crisis is still there, and the problem isn't being addressed. So I think we're sitting in a, as you and I talked about a few weeks ago, we're in a very surreal state where asset markets are, are rising, um, equity markets have recovered from the post-Lehman bankruptcy lows, and everyone's thinking it's business as usual, but it's not business as usual. We're, we're sitting now at two and a half years at a zero, in, zero interest rate cost of money. Um, the spreads on, on uh, credit market instruments and particularly junk bonds just hit a, an all-time low, um, and yet the housing market fails to recover. Housing, housing prices continue to hit new lows, um, and so that means that the, the toxic mortgages that are on the balance sheets of the banks are still in trouble. So I think we're in a, a surreal state of affairs, if you will. That's, that's interesting that you, um, you, you say it's surreal, and I, I do remember we talked about it, and it's indeed surreal. One thing that, we, that we're saying is that the inflation is on the rise. And this is something that some people have been talking about for a while, that you're pumping, I mean, I'm not an economist, and I'm not an expert, and, and, and you probably um, have a much better um, a grip on, on, on perspective than I have. So if you pump in so much money into the system, then eventually um, the prices will have to go up. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. And we are seeing that. Inflation has come back. Um, inflation in India, in, in, in Chile, in Russia, in China, um, and even in Hong Kong apparently there is inflation, there's price rise. So 
But to me that's a real threat and also the common man gets really hit um, if the food prices are on the rise, the oil yes. I, I, yes. is on the rise. And I, 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 I'm pretty certain that uh, this is something that will happen in America as well, if it hasn't already in, 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 in some subtle way. Do you think this is, this is really going to... Um, this, is this a real problem? And the reason I ask you is that um, recently I had a chat with um, someone in, in, in Europe and he was joking and he said, oh, you know what, there will be a time, a time will come very soon when the cost of a loaf will really be, uh, uh, you know, equivalent of a thousand mark or something like that or, or, or a couple of hundred euros, something um, which is reminiscent of, of the of the, the 20s uh, hyperinflation. Now that may be exaggerated, but what's your take on inflation? Um, I, I fully 100% agree that we are going to have a very serious problem with inflation, if not hyperinflation. Um, and I think we're in uncharted waters. This past November, uh, I was invited to go speak at an investor symposium in Kuwait City, speaking to a, a group of very, very high net worth Kuwaiti families as well as institutions. And the, the premise of my speech was that uh, the, the U.S. is basically bankrupt as a country. Uh, the Federal Reserve has become the most leveraged hedge fund on the place, face of the planet. And the, the Fed and the U.S. government are implicitly trying to inflate their way out of this debt problem. Um, if I had some charts with me, I'd be able to show you that the increase in the monetary base, uh, if you use M2 as a measure of the monetary base, is literally off the charts. It's an exponential vertical slope up uh, after the global financial crisis. In addition, the amount of excess reserves held at the Federal Reserve on behalf of the banks who've been the beneficiary of the, the POMO uh, asset buying program from the Fed, it also is a exponential vertical slope up. Trillions and trillions of dollars are sitting in the system. What the Fed has done has, has they've both massively increased the amount of money in the system, but they've been very clever to not increase the velocity of money, so to speak. So, so the, the Fed has injected massive amounts of money into the system over the last two and a half years. And you can see it in an exponential rise in the amount of M2 money in the system, as well as the amount of excess reserves sitting with the Federal Reserve. What has not happened yet is that the velocity of money has not increased. And so therefore, fortunately, um, massive inflation or hyperinflation has not been a threat. However, there's going to come a point in time when the velocity of money is going to increase. And the amount of money that the Fed has injected into the system over the last few years is exponential. And we are in uncharted territory. So I think that axiomatically, we are going to have a very serious problem, not only with inflation, but inflation that you and I have never seen in our lifetimes in, in, in the last 30 or 40 years. Um, the Fed, again, using their, their, their Fed speak and double speak and their smoke and mirrors policy, always points to the fact that core inflation remains very low. And yet, oil prices, food prices, gasoline prices, electricity prices are at multi-decade highs. So apparently Ben Bernanke and his household doesn't use gas and oil and he doesn't use electricity, he doesn't buy food, so the increase in, in inflation doesn't affect him. But in our part of the world here in Asia and emerging markets, China, Vietnam, Indonesia, India, um, food prices compromise a much higher percentage of household income for these families in the emerging markets, and it does have an impact. And I would say to you that um, the geopolitical unrest that we've been seeing in the Middle East, in, in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Bahrain, um, certainly is a result of decades of oppression by these autocratic rulers, but it also has to do with the inflation that is incur occurring in these markets as well. Um, I, I also think that the precious metal markets, gold and silver, platinum and copper, are telling us 
that there is a problem with the monetary system. Uh, in 2003 or 2004, I wrote an article for the Hong Kong Standard at that time uh, recommending people to buy gold when gold was at $360 an ounce. We are now at, at, at gold prices of around $1,400 an ounce and, and silver is now trading $40, $41. The precious metals market is telling us that there is a problem with the global financial system even though the banks have been bailed out. And if you look at a long-term chart of the U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar is virtually on a 45-degree downward slope and is, is testing historical lows. So to, to summarize the, the, the point in your question, I do think that inflation is already a problem. I think it's going to become more of a problem. And if you were to look at some of the statistics that's available on the Federal Reserve uh, database. The, the St. Louis Federal Reserve has an excellent database that is available to the public and some of the time series uh, statistics available in terms of the money aggregates. If you look at the M2 monetary supply, if you look at the excess reserves of banks held the, the Federal Reserve, they are, they are exponentially vertical slopes where in uncharted territories. I think eventually and I don't know if the timing is 12 months from now, 24 months from now, 48 months from now, but eventually the dollar is going to be removed as a reserve currency because the, the global investing community, in particular the Chinese, the Japanese, the Middle East, Russian central banks, and sovereign wealth funds are losing their confidence in the ability of the U.S. to, to manage its monetary affairs. I think we're going to see a new either global currency basket come into place, a global currency back to gold, or something is going to come into place to replace the U.S. dollar. And inflation is a problem, and it's going to remain more of a problem over the next, I would say, three to four years. What about banking? Uh, uh, I mean, everybody's, again, <laughs> gung-ho about banking, and bankers are happy, and uh, and, uh, and 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 everybody's um, happy with the bonuses they're getting, uh, or or apparently happy. That of course, there there are pockets, <coughs> there are pockets of disillusionment, there are pockets yeah. of unhappiness. But by and large, it seems that banks have rebounded thanks to the bailouts in the United States and elsewhere. Um, so they've rebounded and, and apparently they've made profit. I mean, it looks like KP Morgan has made a profit, and all other banks have made a profit. I was just reading the paper. So, <clears throat> I mean, is is this patchwork? Um, is this like we put band-aids and things, and we've, uh, the system has stopped healing, or is the system genuinely um, recuperating? Is the system genuinely um, on its path uh, to its recovery or healing, or is it just we put band-aids? What, what do you think? Well, it's a wonderful question, and we probably need a good bottle of Bombay <laughs> gin in about three hours to to answer the question, but. Um, the bankers should be happy, and the bankers should be happy because they were bailed out from reckless bets, reckless lending, uh, reckless products which brought the system down. And we, we unfortunately live in a system in an era where profits are privatized but, but losses are, are, are socialized, so to speak. And so the, the, the banks have been bailed out for their reckless policies in that period from let's call it 2002, 2003 when Alan Greenspan, the former chairman of the Federal Reserve, purposely lowered interest rates to create an other asset bubble to replace the, the fallout from the NASDAQ and technology bubble of 2000-2001. So although the, the, the equity markets have recovered and although the prices of bank shares have recovered, I do not think for a minute that it is problem solved and, and mission accomplished, as I, as I mentioned earlier. And that comes down to the fact that, if you recall, in the, the first quarter of 2009, in particular March of 2009, when the markets were still falling apart, bankers uh, put pressure on Congress, and Congress put pressure on FASB to uh, eliminate the mark-to-market regulation 
that was causing the bank's balance sheets to, to really fall apart because of the losses in the subprime mortgage market as well as other, other mortgage-linked uh, uh, assets and derivatives. And so, if you recall, there was a period in the first two or three weeks of March 2009 where uh, Ben Bernanke, who was then the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, came out with that wonderful uh, phrase, I start, I'm starting to see green shoots in the market, right? Yes, that's right. And, and also, we, literally within a week of that, that statement, the first utterance of green shoots, the CEOs of the major banks, uh, Citibank, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, said that they were starting to make operating profits on their P&L. They didn't reference the losses that were still happening on the balance sheets. They only were, were focusing on, on the P&L. And then uh, Congress, due to the pressure from the banks and the banking lobby, forced FASB to, to, to uh, allow the banks to no longer mark the, the assets on their balance sheets to market. So now we're in a situation where the banks are basically marking to myth or marking to, to best hope for price. Right, and yet all of these toxic assets, for the most part, are still sitting on their balance sheet, and the housing prices in the U.S. continue to fall off a cliff. So if the housing prices continue to fall off a cliff, and these um, trillions of dollars of, of mortgage, uh, residential mortgage assets are still on their balance sheets, plus the commercial uh, mortgage assets are still on their balance sheets, that tells you that all is not well in the state of affairs and in, in, in reality of the balance sheets of the banks. So again, I go back to that word I used when we first started the, our discussion, surreal. We're living in a surreal state where the Fed has used ZERP, right? ZERP, A, a nightmare yes. from, from a Godzilla movie. ZERP, yes. Uh, ZERP and quantitative easing, monetizing the debt, right? The bastion of capitalism in the United States is monetizing its debt. Banks are allowed to mark to myth or mark to to best hope for price the fantasy, the fantasy if you will, <laughs> the 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 mortgage assets on their balance sheet and the housing market continues to plumb to new lows. So how how is it possible if only 24 months ago the global financial and banking system was melting down and here we are 24 months later and all is well? I would say that we're living under a state of, of illusions and the confidence in the system is misplaced. And this, this policy of, of, a, of a zero interest rate, zero cost basis of money and a very steep yield curve, mark, the, the elimination of mark to market requirements on assets puts us in a place where new bubbles are being formed, whether it's in emerging markets, commodities, who knows where, they, where they, the, 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 the bubble is occurring. Those are probably two very good candidates. But the market is starting to call the bluff of the Federal Reserve because after the announcement of QE2, which the intention was to lower long-term bond rates and, and mortgage rates at the long end of the yield curve, yields have actually moved up. Right? Yields have actually moved up when the intention was to reduce uh, the, the cost of money at the long end of the curve and, and at, at the 30-year mortgage rate. So I would say to you that we have another problem coming down the pipeline. Again, I don't know when it is, but we have another problem coming down the pipeline. And the banks are not as safe as they would like us to think that they are. But you know what's, what's, what's not surreal? That wine is not surreal. <laughs> and the fruit punch is not. So here is it. Cheers. Cheers.